Yo guys, what's up nature? Uh, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna jump into Vol Voltage Modular 2 again. I wanna take a look at the Vintage Voice Bundle. It's a extra a set of modules or instruments actually uh, that you can grab for Voltage Modular 2. And they're based on the Roland Juno 60 and the ARP 2600. And they're essentially full synth voices that you can load in that come pre-patched inside of Voltage Modular. But obviously in the environment, you can kind of uh, really, really go to town with creating some pretty cool, unique and organic sounds with these. Let's dive in, we're gonna check them out. Right, here we go guys, inside of a Voltage Modular. Um, I want to just take a look at the Vintage Voice modules now. You get a couple of modules and then the entire synth voice. Now what I love about these is they kind of bridge the gap between the sort of more complex world of modular and just sort of instant gratification that you get from just sort of simple analog synths. Um, I'm not going to speak for the accuracy of these. Obviously they are modeling a Juno 60 and a ARP 2600. That's the mono version, the Juno 60 is the poly version. Um, but what I like about these is they're pre-patched, so you can kind of put them into the voltage modular environment, um, get instant results out of them, and then take it a step further by kind of uh, integrating them into the whole modular environment that you have here. Uh, so let's just take a look at these quickly, and I'll show you how they work. Uh, we've got the DCO 60. You also get the VCF 60 and the Chorus 60 modules that come with that. And then we've also got the uh, synth voice, which is going to be the ARP 2600, obviously. That looks like that. And you also get the synth voice filter as a separate module as well. Um, now, the cool thing with these is that they are, like, as I said, they are pre-patched. So all you need to do to get going with this, I mean, you can obviously save a... Uh, patch with uh, variations now, so you can actually have uh, individual presets for your um, your patches that you save uh, as of version two in Voltage Modular. Um, but in order to actually get audio out of this, uh, all you have to do is connect it to the outputs. No routing of CV to pitches and things like that. You don't need to do any of that. Once you've got the audio connected, you haven't instantly playable polysynth at your fingertips. So uh, it's pretty faithful as far as the layout is concerned to the Juno. Uh, you've got a single DCO, uh, you've got a saw and a pulse wave that can be dialed in. You've also got a sub oscillator. And a noise generator as well. Um, like I said, I can't speak for the accuracy of it. I don't have a Juno 60 to compare this with. Uh, but it sounds decent. And I, I think the accuracy, you're kind of missing the point of this. The, the point is that you can integrate this into the modular environment, and it's super, super fun to do that. Um, I'm going to actually work with the synth voice. We're going to just get rid of this one. Remember, that's the poly version. So the poly version, you're going to be using poly connections and poly modules to work with this. Uh, we're gonna work with a mono version now, the ARP 2600 or synth voice as Cherry Audio calls it. And let's make a, let's make a nice uh, appreciator patch out of this. So we're gonna, again, to get in, uh, to get any audio out of this, we just need to connect this up. And there you have it. The uh, pitch and gate CV is all hardwired, hardwired to the synth. And just like the um, the uh, ARP twenty six hundred, a lot of the internal uh, there is a lot of internal hardwiring as well. Uh, this works like a patch bay, a normal patch bay. That when you sort of override this by inputting a signal into one of these, you can override the hardwiring to any of these inputs here. So, for instance, if we wanted to get to saw webs, for example, you'll see that the pulse from VCO2 is hardwired into the audio mixer here. In order to change this to a saw wave, you just need to bypass it and route the saw in. So anyway, we'll stick with the uh, pulse for now. Um, Let's uh, bring in some clock modules so we can get clock into this and then uh, bring in an appreciator as well. So we'll bring in a sync divider. 
Uh, we're going to bring in a projector. And yeah, let's get these hooked up. Uh, we'll do sync to sync out. So we're bringing in the 128 BPM from the vault. I'm running this in standalone mode. Obviously, if you're in a DAW, it will sync to your DAW's clock. Uh, we're getting 16th notes from this clock signal. We're going to send this into our clock input on the appreciator. Um, and let's just set this to external clock. We're getting 16th notes there. The appreciator is going to need a polyphonic input um, because you're playing multiple notes at once. Obviously, it's going to come out as a monophonic patch, though. Uh, so let's just connect the MIDI from host to our appreciator. And let's get the CV output is going to be the pitch. We're going to send that. Actually, wait, let's, let's just show off one of the new features as well with um, Voltage Modular 2 is the CV buses. Um, so you can actually patch things essentially behind uh, the front panels like this. Uh, if we go here, I've actually got two assigned already. Um, the CV out for the appreciator. And if we assign that to the pitch, we're going to override the pitch input um, that's hot, currently hardwired to the keyboard. We're going to override that by assigning that to the same bus. And same goes for this one. So essentially what we've got, and you can see when you click over here, it highlights the other ones that are all connected to that bus. These are all essentially wired to one another now like you would normally do. It's just kind of out of the way and in the background. Um, so let's take a listen. We should get pitch happening now. Okay, we've got the pitch happening, but we're still getting a single envelope triggering. We need to trigger the envelope as well. So we're going to send the gate output of this into our gate input on here. Yeah, that's going to trigger the envelope with every single note. Great stuff. There we go. Now let's um, uh, let's set up a little bit of pulse width modulation on this envelope. We're just going to use the uh, we could use the low frequency oscillator. Yeah, we'll just use this one. So that one's already hardwired into the pulse width modulation. We could just dial this up. Uh, sorry, on VCO two. And we can detune this slightly as well. If you hold down control, you can do fine adjustments. Holding down alt will reset the value. And let's bring our saw back in as well. Cool. A little bit of noise as well, I guess. Awesome. Um, so let's, uh, let's get some filter modulation happening here now. Uh, we're going to bring down the cutoff filter. This is hardwired to this ADSR. Uh, we'll bring on a little bit of that. Let's just modify our projector just to be playing down, I think, just a single octave. Great. Now we're going to use the secondary um, AR envelope generator here, uh, but we're not going to trigger this from the Apregio. We're going to use one of my favorite modules, and this is a third-party module, the Euclidean Dual from Misfit Audio. Uh, we're going to send this clock from our Apregio, so we'll just send the clock out into the external clock signal, enable the external signal and we'll just hit play and this is going to follow the appreciator now um, but we're going to use the trigger signal from this euclidean sequencer to trigger our secondary envelope so we'll run that trigger in there 
I set this to trigger mode, not sustain. And we're gonna send the AR out into our filter modulation as well. Now remember, we can't override this one because we're actually using the ADSR from this to modulate the filter currently. We can send this into either one of the other ones because they are hardwired to pitch or LFO. Uh, normally you would use this as a key follow, for example, if you use pitch. And we turn this all the way up. Can you hear the higher up the register, the brighter it's going to be? But we're not going to use that. So we can actually just override anything into this. And we're going to take the AR out and use that to modulate the cutoff as well. I'll bring that down a little bit. Except this AR uh, envelope now is being triggered by the Euclidean dual sequencer over here. So let's get a slightly more interesting rhythm. We'll grab 13 steps and let's go with seven triggers. You can see here your triggers happening. And let's take a listen to what's happening there now. This might need a little bit of tweaking. Getting a really nice, interesting polyrhythm on that filter uh, modulation now. Cool. Uh, let's add some more interesting rhythm to that now as well. What we can also do is bring in the mod wheel to our LFO input here. We'll dial that up. So we're going to override the hardwired LFO here so that we can have the cutoff be changed by the mod wheel. Cool. Um, let's uh, change up the Euclidean dual as well slightly. We're going to add in an extra LFO here. Um, we'll grab just the mini LFO and we're going to just run the triangle into the triggers input. So we're going to modulate the triggers slightly. We'll just grab quite a slow setting for that. So our triggers are constantly moving now as well. It's kind of like a ra more random kind of five that you got going there now. Um, right, let's, uh, let's set up an effects bus. That's sounding a little bit dry to me right now. Um, I don't have the Cherry Audio Year One bundle at the moment, so I don't have a stereo uh, delay that can be synced. What I'm going to do, as I did in the previous video, is grab the host plugin or the host uh, module. We're going to set up a effects bus here now. We'll just grab a preset. I have a preset for Biome currently. Uh, so we can view the editor. Biome's great because you only need to set up one host uh, plugin like this, and that'll let you load up a bunch of different effects in your thing as, as a multi effect. I uh, will change this one to a renown reverb. I'll set the mix to max, bring that down just a little bit, or down 10%, and then I will change the saturation to a tape delay. Let's set up our tape delay as well. We're gonna unlink the left and right. We'll set this to a eighth dotted. We'll leave that around here somewhere. A little bit of feedback. And let's just hook up the whole thing together. We're gonna to send our output from the uh, synth voice to the inputs of our effects bus. And let's just connect those to the master. Sounding pretty cool. Now let's uh, let's start adding in a few more modules. We'll make this even more interesting, even more organic. Um, I'm going to grab a few extra mod modules here now and play around with. Uh, we're going to grab a DC source. Now the DC source is essentially just spitting out a CV signal that you set over here. 
uh, from zero, you can go negative or you can go positive, and it's a constant signal that comes out of that. Um, we're going to duplicate this again, voltage modulo, making that really easy just by holding down the Alt key. And there's your duplicated module. Let's set this to static one volt. Uh, now remember, uh, octave is one volt per octave usually. Uh, so essentially by doing this, we, when we send this into a pitch, uh, pitch input here, you are going to be raising it up an octave. Um, let's set this one to negative one. We'll set this one to two volts and we'll leave that one at zero. And now we're also going to bring in a switch module. So the eight to one switch. We're going to connect the DC outputs to uh, the switch. And seeing as we've only got four inputs here, let's reduce the number of steps to four. So we've only got steps occurring between those four inputs. Now what we're going to do is we are going to send a clock signal to trigger the steps every single time. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually grab a clock divider because I don't want to be using these same 16th notes. I want to be able to slow that down. So we'll grab the clock divider module. I'll just move that. Uh, actually, that can stay over there. Let's send this one to the step CV. Or step trigger, I believe. Let's just double check that one. Uh, then we're going to send the clock output from the arpeggiator into this one. Yeah, then we go step trigger. So every time the clock is running into this, it's triggering the switches to switch between the various different DC signals that we've put in there. So we can kind of set this to five, for example, to slow it down a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to send the CV out from whatever switch is being selected is going to go from the output here to the pitch of VCO1. So remember, these are one volt per octave. So every time it switches, it's going to be raising an octave, lowering an octave through various settings that we have for that. Uh, we're going to do the same to oscillator 2. But in this case, we're going to grab an attenuverter and run our CV signal through the attenuverter instead. And we are going to invert this one. So we'll leave that at unity. So we're not going to change the values at all, but we're going to invert it. So whatever is positive that goes into this is going to become negative and so on. Uh, let's send the output of this one to our pitch for VCO2. And we should have some interesting pitch uh, shifting going on now with this. <laughs> Yeah, there's some really interesting stuff going on there. The oscillators are actually pitching up and down independently of one another, kind of creating some pretty interesting sounds there. Uh, let's take this a little bit further now. Um, we'll introduce some other modules in here just for the fun of it. Um, we can tweak these slightly. Uh, just for the fun of it, let's um, adjust the length on this as well with a CV. We'll just do a really slow one so you get a very gradual change over time. That'll do. Cool. Now I'm going to bring in another external module as well, um, or another third-party module from PSP, uh, the Nitro Bundle. I'm going to grab the Frequency Shifter module. Now this one has a mix dial here, so we don't need to add a mixer to this per se. We're just going to run the output. Um, now this is pretty cool. Uh, 
one of the reasons why I love this update to Voltage Modular is the ability to actually move multiple cables at once. This is kind of as close as you're going to get to working with a real physical modular system. Like The one problem I have with soft tube modular, it's a little bit clunky when it comes to actually patching things around. Um, it's hard to kind of move modules around like it is uh, in, in this one. It's super easy. Um, but holding down the shift key, for example, now when you've got things patched into the multis like, or the multis like this, you don't have to do these individually one at a time to a new module. You can actually just hold down the shift key, grab both at the same time. Letting go now will actually delete both cables at the same time. But we can run from there and just hook this one up. So it's much, much quicker to kind of hook things up in Voltage Modular 2. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to get a little bit of modulation on our frequency shifter as well. Let's just take a listen to what that sounds like first. I want to grab some of those nice metallic tones up top. Um, so we're going to kind of get some S and H modulation going on this. Just set that back to zero. Now the way to do sample and hold in this is to bring in a noise generator. And we're gonna use the white noise and we're gonna run the white noise into a sample and hold module. So we'll input into that. And the trigger source, we're gonna use the same 16th note from our appreciator. So we can just connect the trigger to the clock out. Make sure that external is selected. So now we're going to be getting sample and hold CV out from the output here. Uh, so every time it hits 16th, it's going to sample wherever it is in that noise, which is pretty random. It's going to hold it there for 16th before it re triggers again. So let's bring this into the CV input for our frequency shifter and hear what we get now. <laughs> Okay, so that's suitably random and very metallic. We're gonna bring that back now and just kind of have it just cutting through a little bit in the mix. Actually, just to just uh, tweak this a little bit further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a mixer. Let's bring in a six input stereo mixer. We're going to run the frequency shifter. Instead of running that into the effects unit, we're going to just kind of take these out. We will run the left and right from the mixer into our effects bus. And let's run the output of the frequency shifter into a mono input here. Oh, we'll do it in number two. And I'm just gonna insert, just so we can check this one out as well, the chorus from the DCO, um, DCO from the Vintage Voice bundle as well. We'll grab the sort of Juno 60 chorus. Uh, so here we can run our output. We're gonna run from the uh, VCA out into the frequency shifter, but then also separate that out and put that into the chorus. We'll choose chorus number two, stereo width at max, and then let's bring this back into channel one on the mixer. So we should have a nice stereo chorus effect now. And let's just uh, balance our level slightly here. And we can turn the mix up full now on the frequency shifter because we've got it in the mixer instead. Now we've got something really nice and organic, and I think that's something really, really cool. And it's so much fun getting to this point with these synths. Like I said, they're, they're quite immediate, but you can really, really, really stretch out um, the possibilities that you have with these things. Um, let's just tweak our effects slightly, and I think that's good for this patch.
And there we go. Awesome. So that's just a, a quick look at how you can kind of integrate these into your modular environments, uh, make these beautiful organic uh, predator patches. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button as always. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications so that you know exactly when we have something new on the channel. I'll catch you guys again soon. Cheers.